Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer into the temple, coming to us from Five Point Games, or Five Points Games, I should say. Creator of a wide variety of sta of standalone projects, some of them being journaling, some of them being um, world build experiments, um, other others being supplements for things like masks. Now coming to the forefront with a monster's tale, which is a which is going to be a um, mon like appro approach to powered by the apocalypse. The one and only Kyle Rawlings. How are you doing today, man? Hey. Doing all right. Thanks for uh, thanks for inviting us and, and having us on. Um, I'm I'm Kyle. I'm the I guess co-founder of the company. Uh, the other person who co-founded the name Sam. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm basically the liaison for for interviews and stuff. So I say we as the as the company, not not just me. Um, Does he like green eggs and ham? No, I don't. I don't think so. Oh. I've never, I've never asked. No one's made that joke. I'm disappointed. No one has ever made that joke. I've known them for fif fifteen years almost at this point. I've never seen them eat ham. I've seen them eat eggs. I'll, I'll ask him after this. I'm, sh I'm sure they'll, they'll yeah, I'm sure they'll chuckle. He'll probably, he'll probably cringe over it, but it'll be worth it. Uh, it's, it's all good. Thanks for thanks yeah. for taking a look at our uh, at our stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we have a, we have a ton of masks, a um, yeah. ton of masks and stuff. But uh, yeah, Monster Tales are our first, I guess, big official game. Obviously, like you said, we have we have some standalone stuff, but most of this that stuff is for like you know game jams and, and stuff like that. Game game jams or just light just lighter affairs, oh, in comparison. Yeah, uh, you mentioned uh, a world building exercise. I think you were talking about Lord of, Lords of Creation. Yeah. Um, that's a that yeah that that was a thing that I was involved in for oh, since two thousand and seven. Um, it started on the Gleamax boards, um, which was Wizards of the Coast's original. Well, I think their second version of the forums that they ran. Um, I think there was a yeah. previous pr there, uh, forum before that. There was. I, 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 it's, it's been so long. Um, I'm not really in the D and D space anymore. So my, you know, I'm, I'm getting up there in age, and it's, it's, you know, been a shit show for, uh, for Wizards of the Coast even, even back then. So, um, yeah, we, we started on Glee Max, and then we moved on to Order of the Sticks forums, um, which was uh, Giants in the Playground. Yep. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that project's been going on for more, more than a decade at this point, almost, almost twenty years coming close coming close to it for four years from 20 years um so so yeah i don't i mean that was a collaborative project so i i just put it in a in a pdf i i'm not the only one who worked on that there's there's been over 100 people that have worked on that project mm -hmm. um so but yeah monsters a monster's tale is uh is our first i guess really big standalone project we have it up on kickstarter right now um, we have a little over two weeks to go, and we're, I think, when I last looked, almost at 76% backed. Mm. So, steady, steady. We weekends tend to be a little little slow, so, uh, you know, please take a, take a look. We've put a lot of uh, time and energy into it. And we'll be getting into, we'll be getting into that in more detail yeah, as, we, as we go in. Yeah. So, the tradition around here is to start with the humble beginnings, in a sense. So, mm -hmm. I'd like you to walk me walk me through your first introduction to role playing to role playing games and what made it stick. Um. So, I told the story before in a couple places. Um. I was about eight years old. And you know you get some some money from parents and relatives for Christmas and in birthdays and stuff like that. Um, and I just never spent my money on anything. Um, so I think I had about a hundred dollars saved up 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 at that point, which eight a hundred bucks for an eight year old is 
quite quite a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Um, and my twin brother, uh, was, you know, spending his money on all sorts of really, you know, buying Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, because that's the, the sort of age that I'm, that I am. Um, and my dad just thought it was weird that there was an eight-year-old with a ton of money in his pocket and not buying anything, so took me to a game store in Kent, Ohio. Um, or it was Akron, Ohio at that point. It moved to Kent. Uh, called Spellbinders. No longer in existence, unfortunately. Um, and I took one look at the monster manual for the second edition of uh, Advanced D&D. And I loved monsters. I loved critters. Um, so I, I bought the book. Um, I bought some... Skaven from the uh, Warhammer Fantasy catalog way back in 1991, um, and that kind of started the the process. Um, I had a family friend who had the original Pink Box for first edition D and D. Um, wait, pink, wait, Pink Box. Yeah, the pink the <laughs> or yeah the pink it was it was it was a Pink Box. I'm pretty sure it was called a Pink Box. No, I've never heard it called a Pink Box. I've always heard Red Box. Oh, maybe it was the red box. Maybe I, I'm old. Maybe it was. Uh, yeah, no, it, it's it's the red box. Sorry, uh, it was definitely aged. Um, didn't wasn't red when we got it. Uh, sun damage, I guess. Um, See, I can, I can get that. The, <laughs> I just got thrown off. Yeah, I'm looking the at the cover. Box. It was definitely the red box. Um, again, I'm I'm old. My memory is uh, shot to hell. Uh, too too much beer and partying. Um, and yeah, I, I wanted to learn how to play, so my dad would take me back to uh, the Spellbinders, and I was an 8-year-old playing with a bunch of 40-year-old men on the weekends, which is probably something that wouldn't be allowed to happen nowadays, but um, it, was the it was the early 90s, and you know, uh, no, one, no one really seemed to, to have a concern about that. Um, and yeah, that, that kind of started my... My life in the D&D space, I started buying a bunch of the complete manuals um, for a D&D 2nd edition. Um, still have most of them. Um, and I didn't really have a whole lot of people to play with other than the, the game store. And, you know, kind of life happened and the, the store shut down and moved a couple times. Um, so around, I guess, when 3 Point came out, uh, around middle school, um, I met more people who were playing uh, tabletop RPGs. Um, got exposed to White Wolf's stuff, um, which was kind of a transition from more tactical RPGs to, I guess you could call them early narrative RPGs. Um, so played a lot of mass, uh, Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, we played Mummy, we played Wraith. Um, through high school, we did Demon and, you know, kind of the older, older, old world darkness stuff. Um, and then got into Exalted, and I was usually running the games, so I was already kind of homebrewing stuff even back then. Forever DM. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I, I am. Um, I've been a Forever GM basically since 2005. Um, so, <laughs> very long time. Um, and then I moved across the country and left all my books in Ohio, which is where I'm from. I moved to Arizona, um, after, after college. And that's around when fourth ed kind of came in the picture. Um, so I started doing forum, online forum games, because it was just cheaper and easier to do. And I didn't have my books, which is how Lords of Creation started. Um, I was still doing a lot of 3.5 homebrew, even when 4th Ed was kind of going strong. Um, dipped my toes into Pathfinder, but I was pretty clearly on the way out from Wizards of the Coast and D20 adjacent material by that point. Um, and then one day, a, a friend on the Giants in the Playground forum, which was uh, which was one of the main forums that I, that I stayed on um, through the years, introduced me to Masks. Um, it was my first exposure to Power by the Apocalypse, but it wasn't my first exposure to um, Vincent Baker stuff. Um, I had I had played uh, Dogs in the Vineyard a couple times before, um, and I guess I, I just didn't make the connection immediately that Power by the Apocalypse was was originally created by Vincent Baker. Um, but I fell in love with with the the design philosophy, and 
obviously I have made a ton of masks content. Um, I'm the only, well, I am, uh, my company, as far as I know, is the only company that is, that is even somewhat considered official third party content for masks. Um, we got in contact with Mark Diaz Truman, um, before we did our Kickstarter for the worst generation, which is our, our main masks product, um, to make sure that we were, you know, all legally kosher, um, and he and I have had a, an ongoing dialogue for the last couple of years, um, uh, off and on, and they sent us a nice little, uh, P uh, nice little picture that we can put in our in our PDF that you know basically says approved, you know, approved third party content. Um, so that's pretty pretty neat. Um, and yeah, I started working on a monster's tale like, about three and a half years ago now, mm -hmm. um, and now now we're now we're here i think that that very long-winded answer to your to your question but yeah it's it's been a it's been a journey mm -hmm. now when it comes to when it comes to a monster's tale there's se there's several in this in that monster collecting um subgenre that's brought that's brought up yeah i think there, i think uh, I, I think that answers yeah there now everything everything that you have. Um obviously I can't um, don't think I have too much more to, to extrapolate that on. Um and hang Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Dis Discord decided to pretend my mic doesn't exist. <laughs> oh you're good. I yeah, I just heard some dead air. I was like, Oh uh, I'll I'll fill the space yeah. while while you but do that you're done. What a, um one of the things now, one of the th one of the things that I was was interest the reason part of my interest was there's been plenty of there's been plenty of people who've done their own takes on the, on these mon likes using Pokemon as a base, but you but there's a few other entries that you brought in, and I'm cur I'm curious what factors you from those entries you wanted to bring into a monster's tale, um, and I'm going to sure. be listing off the ones that you have on the kick on the Kickstarter. Um, as mm -hmm. a base, Pokemon's the the obvious one. I don't I don't think I, th I think that one we can that one we can skip because of how ubiquitous it is. Um, yep. Bringing Digimon into the mix it makes things a little bit interesting given all the many directions that franchise has taken over the years. So I'll start with that one. Um, it's probably the one that we have the least. Um, inspiration from, I would say. I mean, it, it's up there front and center just because, it, you know, people recognize it as a, as a name. Mm -hmm. um, I would definitely say Monster's Tale takes a lot of influence from Pokemon. Mostly the manga. Um, less less the games. Um, although there's there's obviously some of that in there. Um, but, you know, for Digimon, it's mostly just the coming-of-age story that, we've, that we kind of want to encapsulate. Um, which, that's the thing about. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Which makes it, which makes sense given, um, given the background with like masks. Right, right. Um, it's 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 a power by the apocalypse game can't be about one thing. Um, mm -hmm. in in my experience, uh, you need you needed a, a breadth of narrative drama to to pull from, um. I, I think that's what Power by the Apocalypse systems kind of excel at is is genre genre conventions and uh, the, the 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 narrative that you can find in those things. Um, and I would say that Pokemon's kind of a coming of age story too. Um, you know, you're you're leaving home, you're going on a journey, you're not coming back the same that you were. You know, you're you 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 start as a, a nobody, and then you become the champion of the of the region that you're that you're in. And you know, depending on the game, you have either you know beaten the mafia or saved the world from being destroyed and recreated, or you know any of the various things that you go through on, in Pokemon. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd say yeah. From Digimon, it's it's mostly just the coming of age aspect and the the connections that you you know the the connections you built with your your critters. Is is the big one? Mm -hmm. Um, and one one of the other interesting ones that was brought up in the list, which is one that I don't hear a whole lot of people talk about these days, is Jade Cocoon. 
Yeah, it's a pretty deep, uh, pretty deep reference, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know many people who actually even knew that was a game that existed when it was out, let alone now. Um, from Jade Cocoon, for those who kind who probably aren't aware, um, was a PS1 and PS2 monster breeding and catching game. It definitely had more connections to like um, Monster Rancher than Pokemon. Um, the breeding was definitely an, an element that that game really wanted you to engage in. Um, that's not really something that we've we've played around with um, too much in the mechanics, but. I like the way that the typings in Jade Cocoon and a lot of the deeper cuts that we've that we've got. I, I only put Jade Cocoon. You know, we we could have given nine or ten different inspirations on the Kickstarter page, but you know, we wanted brevity uh, because you only have so many characters that you can use. Um, but you know, I I've I've been in the monster catching game genre for a really long time. I bought uh, Pokemon Red. Right when, like the the day it came out in the U.S., I remember going to to um, Toys R Us when those existed with my father at like midnight the night before it was released and got an early early version. My brother got the blue version. Um, I I've played every mainline game uh, for Pokemon. I've played most of the side content. Um, obviously, I'm I've I've been involved with a lot of the side like the stuff that. You know, probably isn't going to be remembered even five more years from now. Um, like Azure Dreams, uh, that was another uh, Game Boy Color and PS One game that had some mon elements to it. It was all, it was kind of a proto roguelike with with monster catching themes, um, o- almost like a um, a Dark Cloud meets meets Pokemon. You had like a a city building element to it, um, and the dungeons rearranged. Um, so there was you know, like I said, a little bit of a roguelike el- element before those became really popular. Um, and, you know, I, I've not met a single person who actually remembers Azure Dream. Um, so the way that our company works, we have myself and I have a a design editor. Um, he's mentioned on the Kickstarter page, his name is Thomas. Um, when we were talking about potential games to look at for more mechanical stuff, I mentioned Azure Dream and I just got like a blank, a blank stare. Like no one knew what I was talking about. Um... I was really big in Dragon Warrior Monster. I know they just had a recent game come out. Um, I actually haven't played it yet because I've heard it's it's kind of janky. Um, but I'll, I'll probably still pick it up and, and try it out because I, I love that series. Um, so yeah, we, we try to pull from a, a lot of base experiences because the core book for A Monster's Tale is not presented with our own typings. Um, if you look at the Kickstarter, if you look through the uh, Quick Start, which I, I sent you, mm-hmm. um, you'll notice that all of our typings, all of our Genmon, which is what we call the critters, that's in the back of the book. Um, it's you know it's kind of set aside. Um, we wanted to create a robust narrative framework for people to come in and. Either use the game completely completely out of the box, which is why we have our own, uh, you know, our own typings in our own region, or to come up with your own. Uh, the book has a lot of discussion on how to make your own region, how to make your own genmon, or whatever you want to call your monsters, how to make your own types, how to make them interesting, how to make them unique, um, or what we, you know, we we fully expect people to go. We want to play Pokemon and just use your game to play Pokemon. And it's very easy to do that. I mean, I've, I've had more than 20 people message me through Kickstarter and um, on Reddit and very other, various other places going, can I just use this to play Pokemon? How easy would it be, would it be if I just used the Pokemon type typings? And then the answer is, by design, incredibly easy. Incredibly easy, though, I will, I will admit in... My, in... My particular case, I would I would rather I would rather venture off the be, the, the beaten path than revisit what's already been done. Um. Yeah, and I and I'm with you. Um, I I've I've remarked to our design editor and and our artists. Um, 
artists who are, you know, we have we have a, a character artist and graphic designer who is Sam, who's my co-founder of the company. And then we have Kelly, who doesn't have any socials, or I would share those. Uh, and she's doing all the, the, the monsters, um, which they're amazing. She's, you know, she's really good. Um, I should know what I mean. What I mean by that is, um, for con for context, some a couple of years ago, I covered the um po the Power Rangers RPG as well as Avatar Legends. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Within the same month, and I was very harsh on both of them for a very similar reason. In that, I felt that they were trying to that they. Were try they did not see the source material that they were working with as a sandbox. They, f it felt like they, it felt like they were at they're acting like the like this was adapting the TV show and not the world that the TV show takes place in. Um. Yeah, I I have a similar view um, to the I haven't looked at the po the Power Rangers one. Um, Thomas, uh, the our, our design editor, um, has played it a few times. Um, I won't share his his thoughts because they're his thoughts. But um, it's it, we've we've discussed it in in company before. Um, but you know I'm I'm a big fan of Magpie. Um, I I like a lot of their stuff. Um, obviously I've I've had uh we we've had we've sent people from our company to actually run games with them at Gen Con. Um, I've talked with Mark Diaz Truman. Um, you know I I think. In the Power by the Apocalypse space, they're probably one of the bigger names now, um, and maybe one of the most recognizable names thanks to Avatar. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I've I've heard a lot of critique on the Avatar game. I have not actually got to sit down and run it because um, making games basically affords you no time to run and enjoy games. Um, so. I, I plan to sometime this year to, to actually sit down and, and play the game that I that I spent money bu spent money buying. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've, I've heard a lot of complaints about the the combat, the bending the bending system. I, I, I see a lot of people say it's too crunchy and, and not very fun. Um, and I also, as as you said, it's it's trying too hard to be the TV show and not trying hard enough to be the world that the TV show is based in. Um, yeah, and. The the thing the thing is is that it's it I've seen s it's not even the fact that it's using PBTA that what that was my issue because Legend of the Elements was originally Avatar World before they scrubbed anything that anything that might get Nintendo's lawyers um, attention and yes and, you mean you mean Nickelodeon's not Nintendo but yes yeah Nickel Nickelodeon it's too ma too many ends um, yeah you're good and. In that in that same, when it comes to do, when it comes to doing something that is that is um, heavily inspired by a given IP, it's important it's important to it's important to not limit oneself oneself to just replicating what's already present in whether it be whether it be games, films, or whatnot. Um, the, the this is the reason why everyone ha everyone more or less forgot the Indiana Jones game that TSR made back in the day. Because right. it's it that was the exact thing that it did. <laughs> it um yeah I'll be uh I'll be interesting interested to see how Evil Hat does it because they they just announced not too long ago that they are um they're doing an Indiana Jones uh Powered by the Apocalypse adjacent not, game. Um Tomb Tomb Raider is what they're doing and oh Tomb Raider I'm I'm sorry you're correct I I thought I saw that they also mentioned Indiana Jones but you are correct that it is Tomb Raider um. And if I'm and if I'm being honest, I'm not all that optimistic about their take. And it it probably it probably would have been able to have a better spot if it weren't for the fact that a that a Tomb Raider um, TTRPG was developed less than a year ago by one of Crystal Dynamics employees. And oh, I didn't know that. And re and re and released out and released out there for free. So. Huh. <laughs> If I, so, yeah, I imagine there's some controversy with that. I well, I try to avoid controversy when it comes when it comes to this sort of stuff. So um, I, I didn't see any. It's of it. it's it's not an, it's less an issue of controversy and more an, and more an issue of when the, when there's that when there's that contrast. Um, 
the question is the question is going to be why should I, why should I go with the with your version when there's this other version that's already been that's already been out for a while, oh, right? That kind of thing. It's a fair question. Yeah. Oh. The. The. Now, now, one of the, now, when it comes to that, when it comes to the fact that you're using PBTA, obviously that is going to involve using, um, using bo using books, using game books. I should, um, not game books, playbooks. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. But from what I'm seeing in the ki in the Kickstart, um, you you have you have se each game book has its own little. For lack of a better term, archetype that you're that you're using that has a potential spread a potential spread of oh, of the of the core modifiers as well as its own unique move, and is mm -hmm. is that something that's going to be carried forward into the into the into the um, full book? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, what what you see in the quick start is pretty much the full book. Um, just there there are some things missing. Um, so each playbook, which are called Journeys, um, you can kind of tell by the titles, like the Doctor, the Champion, you don't start out as those, those things. Those are things that you are, are traveling to, to become. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, to me, reinforces the idea that the game is about the journey, not about the destination. Um, and I think it highlights that kind of coming of age element of... Who are you setting out to become? Let's see if you get there. Mm -hmm. um, so we played around with the... Uh, as I, like I said, this game's been in, in, in development for about three and a half years. Um, <clears throat> there are still a few minor tweaks coming um, to the final pro project. Um, I'm not going to highlight any of those here. You guys will just have to be surprised. But... Um, the the playbooks went through several iterations, and we we kind of decided that this was the best way to do it. Um, so you have the champion, and then you have four back backs backgrounds in, in there. Um, like one is the specialist. You know, you're a, you're an ace type. You you you're really good with one specific specific type that you can use. So if you want to specialize in fire Pokemon or or whatever, uh, in, or the blaze Genmon, as it may be, um, you know, you, you get bonuses for that, but you also get penalties for um using wave type genmon um and yeah all all four all, all eight playbooks have four four of those um and each one sort of highlights a specific reputation which is our which is our stats our, our labels um and each playbook has a fifth label or a stat that's it's unique in name to them, and it's there to sort of highlight their um, their their playbook drama, their narrative drama. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I don't think we put the GM advice in on the playbooks. I think that is one of the things that's missing. But there is a segment of each um, each playbook. Um, you know, basically, how do you run this playbook? What are some you know what are some ins and outs of some of the moves like clarification uh, that that we that we haven't put in that will obviously be in in the final book. Um, and yeah, there's there's a segment on each and every single one of their unique like why is why is why do they have this unique stat and what does it mean to them to to roll with it and to use it. Mm -hmm. um, and the other the other thing that's missing from each playbook is a finale. Um, it's mentioned in if you look at e each one of them has a mechanic which is like a, it's called a journey mechanic. Uh, it's basically a, their their mini game. You know, how do they interface with the journey that they're going on? Obviously, the champion fights gyms. Uh, the idol has contests. Um, the doctor is healing people in in Genmon on the road. Uh, the captain is doing community service. They want to be a, a member of the, the a wider member of the community. Um, so the thing that one of the things that we did leave off was the finale. So basically, you get your eight gym badges, right? And each each badge is sort of its own benchmark if you look at the advances you can actually see that you that the advances are staggered um by how many of these these benchmarks that you have you know you've done you've done four contests you now unlock better better advances um you know you've you've done all of your benchmarks now you have even better advances that you can use um so once you hit eight 
a lot of Powered by the Apocalypse games have a very set you've advanced you've advanced enough with your character you leave the fiction um and i've never felt that that's very organic um so you have the option to bow out whenever you feel like it's good for the narrative um oh i've i've reached 8 8 of these these benchmarks i'm going to travel with my friends for a little bit longer oh i'm you know i i want to play a new character or you know, I'm I'm done playing in the campaign, and I'm gonna take my leave now. I can tr trigger it, um, and it's a firebrands. I don't have, uh, I don't know if you've seen firebrands. Um, I, ha I it, have. Okay, cool. So yeah, it's a, it's like a firebrandsy back and forth question and answer round, basically, kind of how the firebrand moves are set up that each playbook gets. Um, so you know, the champion is you get to fight the champion. Tell me, you know, talk talk with the GM about how that goes. You know, you have some questions they have some, you know, to, to ask you. You answer them back and forth until you're done. Um, the professor playbook gets to hand out a jet, the Genmon to the next generation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you get to be Professor Oak. Um, the idol gets to do their big damn, big damn contest and you know put on their put on the show that they want to put out. Um, so you know, there's a, there's there's the nice little end cap. Um, and at the each at the end of each one of those, there's a question of basically, where do you go from here? You know, your the, your story at the table is done, but your story as a character isn't. Where do you go from here? And each one of them basically has a kind of a rote answer of, um, you know, they're flavored differently, but they they're all they all all the playbooks basically you know um, follow the same formula of. I did what I set out to do. I'm going to enjoy my time um, being what I want to be. I reached where I want to be, but I still think there's room for me to improve and to grow, so I'm going to go off and do that. I reached where I wanted to be, and I'm not happy with where I am, so I'm going to actually keep going through the world and seeing what it has to offer, or I didn't reach where I wanted to be, and I'm, I'm going to keep finding where I want to be. Um, so it really gives the, the player a lot of room to send their character off with as 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 much pomp and circumstance as they as they feel is appropriate, while still being thematic to the ideals and the and the concepts of the playbook. Yeah, I can certainly get that. Yeah. Now, shifting to the Genmon, um, mm -hmm. since you brought up mass, I w I will note one if there's one particular. Um, drawback that ma that mass has it's ha it or rather a double edged sword it's how it treats um, powers and obviously do obviously doing that with some with something like Genmon wouldn't be adv wouldn't be advisable so even even though you're not even though you're not developing a a, a um har as hard and fast of a of a list you of Genmon you do have some degree of 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 um create your own ap approach with some with some aspects of it are you are you putting it do you plan on putting in guidelines for the g for the gm if they want to create their own oh yeah yeah i, I um i think we touched on that earlier um and for, for the record there is going to be a genmon dex we we do have 60 in the base book um, and if we get a certain stretch goal, we'll, we'll be adding more, obviously, and I'm, you know, fingers crossed that we hit that one, um, because we have some really awesome ideas. One of them is a tumbleweed made out of bees. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm really, ha I'm excited to get that one, uh, drawn up. Um, but yeah, uh, so chapter five is the GM section. Um, it's a little like what you'd expect. You can kind of take a look in the, in the back of the, the quick start and see some of the stuff that we added, but... Uh, chapter five is definitely the largest chapter. Um, if you don't count the the, the playbooks as part of, of the the carrot the, the the player chapter, um, and there is a lot of discussion on what is a genmon exactly, and not just like what is it in the world, but what is it in the like what is it narratively? What is a genmon meant to be? Mechanically, what is it meant to be? Had to have it. What what is a gen genmon in, on, on every like every metric? It's not it's not just a critter. What how does it play? Why does it play? What's the space that it plays in? Hmm. Um, like like I said, kind of at the top, we went in to design a game that 
you could either port your own things into, create your own things, or use what we've given you. Hmm. Um, and our plan uh, is to make a lot more content for this game. This is, you know, we we are not a, a an indie company that kind of just is a one and done. Um, we want to support what we make as as uh, as much as we can. Um, we have a couple splat books up for stretch goals. I'm also super excited to, to get to those. Um, even if we don't get those back, event we will eventually get them. Um, both of them are are about eighty percent written at this point. So um, you know, just slower development time if if we don't get them backed by by stretch goals. But you know, hoping that we do. Um, and they expand not only on our genmon and but also our types and what it means to have a typing. Um, and you know, gets gets a little bit more funky because we you know we've we started off as a homebrew company. Um, that's what I started off in, in, in the design space. And it's my personal opinion that modding and homebrewing makes a game last longer. Um, you see a lot of this, in, in, especially in, in the indie space, where, like Masks, um, it's still mentioned a lot. It's still brought up as a really good Power by the Apocalypse game. I think it's one of the best on the market. Um, if you're really looking for a solidly well-made Power of the Apocalypse game, I think Masks is is one of the go-tos. But Magpie's not making any more content for it. And the player base has has dwindled because of that. Um, and especially in the indie space, homebrewing has kind of a, a negative connotation. Uh, I think both of us are are in the in, have been or are currently in uh the the D D space. Um and I think we 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 could both agree. There's a lot of really good homebrew in the D and D space, and there's been a lot of good uh, homebrew in the D and D space. There's also a lot of not good homebrew in the D and D space. And I don't know about you, but I mean, I was a DM for G uh, a, a DM uh, for you know 15 years. I'm sure you have horror stories of someone bringing a homebrew that was just pants crappingly broken. Either it didn't operate out of the box the way it was supposed to, or it broke the game in ways that would that were just obvious on a first read. Um, so I think there's a bit of a stigma to, to homebrew just in the in the TTRPG space. Um, um, go ahead, I'm sorry. Any um stick? <sighs> I've always found the idea of um. Of a stig of any sort of stigma around homebrewing, um, silly. Because, oh me, yeah, me too. Because well, for one, Gygax homebrewed his own damn game. <laughs> right. And everybody, everybody always talks about um about how how the beauty of TTRPGs is you is you can play it your way. And then does a surprise Pikachu face when people play it a certain way that they that they didn't ex that they didn't expect or something like that. You know, the Right, exactly. Um I had sat through a vi I sat through a video the other day where somebody was going on for about ten minutes about the problems with people looking at builds in TTRPGs and how that's not the intent and and I'm sitting here going You're not their dad, dumbass <laughs> Right, I mean, I'm I'm old enough to remember the Stormwind fallacy. Be not like, uh, I remember I I, rem I remember being in the space before the Stormwind fallacy existed, and I was on the forums where the Stormwind fallacy was created, mm -hmm. like was coined. Um, I'm I am of that of that age where I you know I I saw it happen organically. Um, the so the I know I know I I agree. I think I know that you can play a table as as long as your as your table is happy and in agreement. You can play a tabletop RPG however you want. Yeah. Um, oh. And I'm I'm passionate about game design. Um, I'm actually a moderator on the Powered by the Apocalypse for, uh, Discord server. Um, we run... Uh, we had a move month where we just had an entire month where people would, would be able to come on the server and we would share move designs and, and concepts and we would help each other out working on making them better or you know, giving accolades for the stuff that was really good. Um, we have a playbook jam coming up. Um, or I guess you could call it a jam, but a playbook month uh, coming up in April. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm passionate about game design. And I I definitely like Power by the Apocalypse because it's it's so much easier to do. 
Um, there's a lot less mechanics to worry about when it comes to math. The narrative elements are harder to hit, but I think they're easier to learn and pick up. And I wanted to make a game that encouraged people to go, you know, I want I want this Genmon in the game. And that it wouldn't require the GM to sit down for seven days, coming up with 25 different moves, figuring out how they evolved. Um, you know, it's to, to make a Genmon, you pick a couple types... And you maybe give it a, a, a move if you want, and you're done. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's it's really that it's really that simple. Someone someone asked if um, you could make a ditto like character uh, creature, um, and I mean, I just on 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 Reddit, and I I think I took maybe five minutes to write a, a review, and was done with the with the the Genmon. I, I I just wrote a Genmon for them, just out of you know just there on on the spot. So. You know, I, this this sort of goes back to the question that you asked of like how easy is it to make a gemmon? It's that easy. It it takes five minutes, if if that. Um, and and that may not be everyone's cup of tea, uh, because I I certainly can understand where people would feel like maybe that's not um. There's not enough difference between the gemmon, but there's a ton of content in the book to explain like how do you make a gemmon feel distinct and unique, um. You know what? What like? What are some descriptors? Like we have a, a fire bat that can that does echo location by heat. That doesn't make sense scientifically, but it's a kids game with put with with monsters make it work. Um, so you know that that right there, it's it's a blaze type, but it has something that another blaze type doesn't have, and that affects the fiction. You know, um, and it doesn't take much to 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 craft that at the at the table. Um, so yeah, it was it was definitely at the forefront of of my thinking of like. How do you make this easy on the what what makes us different than other other Pokemon or our monster catcher games? And I think that that's the big one is just it it's fast and out of the box um, and just as effective. Um, you know, you, there's there's no loss of efficiency or uniqueness in the monsters, but they're easier to come up with and um, they're they're just easier to use just plain and, and, and simple and, and just in the moment. It's hard to translate how many pages from Google to PDF. It's about a hundred and it's about 170 pages in Google Doc. I think it's going to be around 250 pages. Um, that's including the, the Genmon decks and the region and like it's a it's a 100 and something page PDF, but it's double spread, so it's like, I think 53 pages all in, all told, and the document that I sent our graphic designer was 84 pages in Google Doc. Um, it's not a, it's not a it's not an easy calculus because it doesn't take into consideration how much art there's going to be and that obviously adds to the page count because you can't fit as much space in with when when you have a ton of art on a page. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm, I'm willing to say it's probably going to be around 250 pages for the physical product. Um, I think on the Kickstarter we said 2026 or 2027, but that's so uh, a couple a couple of people actually asked this on on Reddit too. Um, we've run this is our third Kickstarter, and we just know that sometimes life throws you a curveball. Um, COVID was our our first curveball. Um, and what a curveball that was. So we gave ourselves a lot of time for this. The core document is 100% written, and the editor is already almost done with Chapter 3. There are six chapters. Um, so he's you know, about halfway through editing um, on the first run. So the, PD, the way that we operate is once 
the document is 100% edited, we send it to Sam, and he gets it into a PDF with all the art that we have on hand, and we release that as sort of like a soft launch. Um, and then we update as we, we add art. Um, so the PDF will definitely be released by the end of 2024. Um, how much art it will have in it is hard to say, um, because obviously there's a lot of art, um, not just character art um, and, and stuff like that, but the Gen Mon are a lot. Um, and obviously if we get the stretch goal to add 30 more and bring us up to like 90, that's going to add a little bit of time. I'm tentatively saying 2025 for the physical book. All right. I can but we've given... Well, go, ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. I, I can get behind that. Yeah, I, and you know, um, we gave ourselves, like I said, a, a, an extra year and some change to account for any mistakes with printers or a death in the family. We had a couple of those during Worst Generation that really sidelined us. Um, one of the things that... So I, I used to work in the video game industry um, doing Kickstarter fulfillment. And one of the things that I took away from my time doing that was you can never be too transparent. So when we ran a worst generation, we did an update every month. And people that were, you know, on our Discord and, and, and kind of connected to the, you know, um, company through just buying our stuff was like, that's maybe a, maybe too many updates. Um, so the way that we're doing it now is there will be an update every two months just to let people know where we're at and any updates that we, you know, any if anything crops up, there will be an additional update. Like, you know, if we get a ton of art, we will definitely share that on, in an update that's not, you know, if we if we put out, out an update on the on the first of the, dub, the, of the two months and then we have a ton of stuff to share the day net after, we'll probably do another update. Um, so we we have a pretty open line of communication. It's one of the things that we pride ourselves with. Um, we have a Discord. I'm, I, like I said, I'm on the Power by the Apocalypse Discord. Um, we have Twitter. We have Blue Sky. Um, it's, and obviously our Discord is, it, you know, D Discord DMs, um, really easy to get a hold of me. There, there are a lot of ways to get a hold of us as a company. And we, we pride ourselves in maintaining those sorts of, those sorts of connections. Um, we, we want, we want our community and people who buy our games to be able to approach us at, at any given point. Um, and as long as they do it respectfully and, and um, you know, not just, you know, screaming obscenities at us, uh, we are generally pretty happy to sit down and, and talk, to, talk to people um, if, if they have complaints or if concerns or, or anything like that. And I, I will certainly be looking forward to seeing how it develops. But with that yes, said, hey, thank you. With that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens here. And anytime, no, thank you for thank you for having me. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around yeah, here, yeah. drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Sorry to cut. Off, sorry to cut off a couple times. Just had to do my thing. Oh. Yeah, no, you're good. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come out of to come to come on to the temple and enjoy the madness. He's an English monk. And there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>